When we're commissioning a VFD, there's quite a few settings that we have to set, a lot of which are dictated by the motor itself. But one of them that is a little more flexible, but it is variant on the application, is the acceleration and deceleration time. It is important to set that appropriately, and there's a few things to consider in that. Now, my general, like, if I can starting point is 90 second acceleration, with a 60 second deceleration, but that is not always the best way. And let's talk about that a little more. I'm holding Schamberger, I'm with Chiller Academy and HVAC time. Let's talk about VFDs, whether we're dealing with a pump, whether we're dealing with a tower system, or are we dealing with just a chiller? There's some of these chillers that we have a very basic, like disposable style drive package in them. Most of the smaller side, so the larger side, not so much, but the smaller ones, that is true. And we've got to be able to program and set these appropriately. Now, as I stated, there is not a one size fit all. And you really have to pay attention to this because if you set this wrong, the, the drive is going to fight with the controls package. Okay, that is your, uh, typically we're, we're usually talking speed control for what we're talking about or pressure differential control, something along those lines. It's going to fight that and it's not going to work with the control system because it's not adjusting its speed appropriately for the motor to achieve whatever the results are. And that motor could be too, uh, too reactive, so it reacts faster than the control loop can actually keep up with it. And so then you end up with this back and forth because they're, they're fighting each other that way. At the same time, it could be too slow. And if it's too slow, then it can't ramp up and catch what the uh, control algorithm is trying to accomplish, the PID, the Proportional Integral Derivative Algorithm that is controlling what this uh, motor is supposed to do via the drive. So it is important that if this is an OEM drive, this is put in by the manufacturer, this is not a field installed and field commissioned component, Follow the OEM specifications always. You have to follow those because for the most part, especially with these manufacturers uh, control panels, there are a team of people that spend a lot of time and a whole lot of money vetting out these control sequences and all their timings and everything is exactly how they want it to be to function the best it can. And so if we don't follow that and we try to manipulate too much what they set by the factory, then we end up uh, creating this whole issue where the, the, the system is not going to operate correctly because it's expecting that drive to do X. But because we didn't follow the specifications, it did Y. And that's not, that's not going to go well. Now, on a plant side of this, so from a plant level, we're usually working with a plant automation system or building automation. And we've got pumps that are running on, or we have pumps and towers would be the two most common extra items there. Those are going to be filled installed drives, filled installed control systems, and all of that is set accordingly. Now, it is important that the drive acceleration and deceleration speeds or times be co co coordinated with the building automation because in that same way if they expect you to use default parameters or if they're expecting you to use something different entirely and they configure uh to that and they um that that'll cause these same issues with the pump or the tower fan controlling properly and we'll have whatever swing issues we're dealing with and you know that motor constant like if, if it's too fast, that motor constantly ramping up and down, up and down is not good or healthy for the drive or the motor. So we want to keep a nice, smooth, stable operations. The whole point of a PID is smooth and it's where it's its most efficient is when it smooths out that, that output graph to where it's a fairly consistent signal getting sent versus this is constant up and down. Now, a lot of manufacturers their drive packages come with say a 30 second acceleration as default and it could be 30 seconds or 10 seconds deceleration somewhere between there uh for, for the deceleration time and for me personally for most applications i find that a little fast and here's the thing to keep in mind faster on that time 
means a, a, a harder workload on the motor itself and the drive itself because it's got to put a, a more output out faster, which puts more stress on the system. So if we can run it slower, then we can get more gradual step ups. And it also helps improve our efficiency overall because we're not having to get up to these speeds as quickly. We can ease into this stuff more gradually. It's the whole point of just kind of the soft starter mentality. Now, if we go too slow, though, it may not be responsive enough. And we've talked about that. And so there is a balance to this. Uh, you, you, you don't, you don't want to swing one way too far more than the other. And that is the core fundamental, what I want to lay here and making sure that you're coordinating with the controls system. Now, I've also found that a lot of automation technicians know how to make these adjustments to the drive. So we may go in, we may do the install, we may do the initial commissioning and we make sure everything's laid out. But usually in my experience, the automation team will be the last ones on site getting the final tune up or tune in uh, of their control sequences and everything's tied in, verification, all the signals are happening where they're supposed to. And most automation technicians I know, they will, they'll go to the drive and they'll modify those times to fit their control loop. We have to be mindful of that. So if you're the commissioning tech and you set all this a certain way, and this is how you thought you wanted it to run, but you come back after the automation team is done and you see that it's been changed, don't just jump the gun and go to change it because they very likely had a reason to set it where they did. And if, if anything, at minimum, ask some questions. Now, if there's a certain reason it wasn't supposed to be set the way they did it, and I'm not saying that they're always right, then I would first just start a conversation with somebody. And if that's not the specification set forth by the engineering team for whatever reason in their schedule, then um, like just have the conversation, but don't jump straight to, well, I'm just going to fix it back to the way I had it. Uh, I've done that kind of stuff before, and, and you'll you'll get a whole plant just out of whack pretty quickly if you're not careful. Uh, and that, that's just, yeah, it just learns from some of my mistakes. Don't don't be too jumpy with that. Uh, it is really important that these things be synchronized if we want smooth and successful operation. It's not always about just being right or you know, having it run the way we want it to, you know, it, it is a collective effort. There's been some applications where I've used 120 second acceleration with a 90 second deceleration. Uh, to give an example of that, there was one building and this was an old building with an old set of controls. The, there wasn't any way to work on the controls anymore. It was, it was a really messed up scenario, to be honest. Um, the, no, nobody had the software to service it. I think it was an old uh, lawn system at that. I don't remember the, the brand or any of that. It, I don't, I don't, it may have been a Delta. I don't think so though. I really don't, I don't remember those details. What I remember though is one, we couldn't make any adjustments to the programming. Even the automation people they had couldn't do anything for it. They, they it was basically just enough to keep it functioning and they didn't know what they were going to do about it yet at the time. But one of the issues on one of the air handlers was the static uh, control PID was way too fast and it was causing the static pressure to just spike like crazy. And um, the motor was just nonstop. Just you stand in the mechanical room and you just heard the thing just up, down, up, down, up, down. So, this was one example where because we couldn't fix it on the automation side, which was the main issue, uh, I was able to slow it down dramatically at the drive, which it's not the best solution, but what it did allow is that motor took longer to adjust. And because it was taking longer to adjust, it did allow that PID to smooth out a little bit and it wasn't so severe and we weren't putting as much stress and we weren't having as many of the spikes we were uh, on the um, on the static. So just 
ways that we can manipulate this in a unusual circumstance. In, in the end, I like 90 and 60, 90 acceleration, 60 deceleration, because it allows a very just easy, smooth, up, down, ease in, ease out process. And I, I find that that's, for me, that's a pretty nice sweet spot. I know a lot of guys that prefer 60, 30. Again, it's, it may be the same result, just happens a little bit faster. Just please keep in mind, this is not a one size fit all. And we have to co coordinate with the control system, whoever that is, whether that be OEM, whether that be an automation technician, we have to coordinate these things to work together. Okay, uh, that's, that's my main takeaway I'd like you to have from this. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear what are your preferences further, you know, go down in the comments, let me know, like, how, how do you go about this? Or what are some horror stories you've had? What have you ran into that you're just like, e yeah, I, I had this scenario, you know, because these things, as we share this stuff is really helpful for those who haven't had to go through these things. And, you know, we all know how it is, we get into a scenario, and it's just like, is this a, like, am I the problem here? Or, is, or what? By sharing some of this experience, we can communicate that most of the time, no, you're not, you're probably not the problem. This is just what we deal with and we've got to take, take steps to correct it. That, that's really what it comes down to. Anyway, love to work with you over at Chiller Academy. If you would go check it out, chilleracademy.com. I've got the intro course over there. I've got a free course coming in November of 24. And then uh, I've got a service course coming. So if you're watching this sometime later down the road, I've got a service course, uh, help you to help show you how to go through these different service procedures and stuff so just something to be thinking about check out with that mtt make the time for your family for your spouse and for your kids i'll see you around